What's up everybody, welcome to the video. My channel name is College Football Frenzy and today I'm going to be breaking down the Washington Huskies 2020 football schedule. So Washington was a team the last couple of years, or at least before 2019, was a team that had won Pac-12 championships. In 2016, they won the Pac-12 and made it to the college football playoff. So they had consistently been a very good team under head coach Chris Peterson. That kind of changed a little bit last year. Going into the season, people had high expectations for them again. They were a top 25 team. Most people thought they would compete with Oregon uh, to win, to have a chance at winning the Pac-12 title, maybe make another Rose Bowl appearance, or maybe even a playoff appearance. But definitely most people thought Washington will, would at least have a shot at winning the Pac-12. Now, that changed quickly. Washington was supposed to start out pretty strong. Their schedule did not look that hard to start out the season. And then they lost to Cal. And from then on out, the season was pretty disappointing. They really didn't get many big wins. They choked against USC. They choked against... Oh, no, sorry, they beat USC. But they choked against Oregon, and they choked against Utah. USC was really their only big win after they lost to Cal. So it was a pretty disappointing season for the Huskies. They did beat Boise State, Chris Peterson's former team that he used to coach. Uh, so it was a little bit of a weird bowl match of Chris Peterson going against the team he used to coach. Uh, they did win that game. That was a big bowl, bowl game win for them. But overall, the season was a pretty big disappointment. Besides those two wins against USC and Boise State, there was a lot of disappointments and bumps along the way. Usually Washington's a ranked team, and finishing like 8-5 and five is not a good season for the Huskies. It looked like they might beat Oregon, but they choked that game. So really not much went their way. Now, a lot of change is happening. Obviously, Chris Peterson has retired from coaching, so he will not be the coach of the Huskies for this upcoming season. Who will be? It's going to be Jimmy Lake. So he was with the Huskies the past few years. Uh, you know, I think I think he's a, he'll be a pretty good head coach, but it's definitely going to be a transition for the Huskies. You know, obviously Chris Peterson's probably a Hall of Fame head coach, and losing him is going to hurt a lot. So it's definitely going to be, in my opinion, a big transition. And they're losing a lot of key players on the offense and the defense. Mainly on the offense, the biggest loss is clearly quarterback Jacob Eason. That definitely hurts a lot. So they'll have to find a replacement for him. And they're also losing some other... They're, some other uh, options. So it's definitely going to be a different season for the Huskies. I understand they're losing a lot of talent. Some is coming back, and they do have a top 15 recruiting class. So there are some good things for the Huskies for this upcoming season. But overall, it's 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 probably going to be a transition year for the Huskies. But without further ado, let's get into the schedule breakdown. One, Michigan. Tough game right off the bat. You, it, It's at least at home. I will say Jim Harbaugh with Michigan has not done well in the first game of the season on the road against an out-of-conference team. Cough, cough, Utah. Cough, cough, Notre Dame. So he hasn't done well again in these types of games. But on paper, Michigan, in my opinion, is the much more talented team. Washington has a new coach. Jim Harbaugh, I think he's still a pretty good coach, and he's experienced at least... I think it's going to be a tough game for the Huskies. I will say it's a home game, and it's a very tough place to play in. So that's definitely going to help the Huskies. But overall, I'm going to favor Michigan this game. They're really the more talented and better team. I wouldn't be shocked, though, if Harbaugh pulls a Harbaugh and loses the first game of the season, though. Two, Sacramento State really should not be a problem whatsoever. Easiest game on the schedule. Three, Utah State. You know, I just feel like they lost a key player. Oh, that's right. They just lost quarterback Jordan Love, who went to the Packers in the first round. That's a pretty big loss for Utah State. I don't think Utah State's going to compete uh, this upcoming season. Washington wins this one easily. Four, bye week. Nice time. I guess it's a nice time to have your bye week. I would say usually for most teams, week four is way too early to have the bye week. But at least it's right before Oregon. And then Utah, obviously Utah's a couple weeks after that, so it's before a tough stretch, so that definitely helps. Five at Oregon in Austin, very tough place to play. Oregon has the best recruiting class in the Pac-12. They had a great offseason overall. Anthony Brown, I believe, came from Boston College to the transfer portal. So the quarterback situation overall, it's not as great as it was last year, but still Anthony Brown, Tyler Shaw, whoever it is, is going to be a decent quarterback. Their defense, I think, will be a top five one in all of college football. And to be honest, they have plenty of offensive weapons. And it's a home game for Oregon. So this is the game I think that's most likely to be a loss. And I know Washington fans are going to hate to hear that. They're absolutely going to hate to hear that Oregon's the most likely loss. But it just is. It's just a really tough place to play at. 
and Oregon's a better football team. I just have to throw that out there. So I'm going to take Oregon in this one. Six, Oregon State, Oregon's rival. This really shouldn't be a problem uh, for Washington. I think they win this one pretty, pretty easily. Oregon State, in my opinion, is a me mediocre Pac-12 team. Seven at Utah. Utah obviously beat Washington last year in Washington. This time around at Utah won't necessarily be a very easy game. Not an easy place to play at. It should be interesting to see. It's going to be a tough game for the Huskies, though. I will say Utah's talent probably isn't as good as Washington's. Uh, you know, they don't really have a great recruiting class. And on top of that, they're losing their two best players on offense, Tyler Huntley, the quarterback, and Zach Moss, the running back, both gone. So that definitely hurts a lot. I think the defense, though, for Utah is still decent. And overall, they still have a great coach in Kyle Whittingham. So I think this is a 50-50 ball game. I could realistically see either team winning it. They're definitely both going through a little bit of a transition. A Arizona. I refuse to believe Arizona will beat any of these really good Pac-12 teams. I, I just don't think Arizona is very good. Uh, so I think Washington wins this one, one easily. 9 at Cal. So Cal beat Washington last year. That was the first, I believe that was Washington's first loss. A lot of people were shocked by that. Then people just started thinking Cal, maybe they're a good football team. They end the season not so great though. Cal, Cal turned out to just be an average team. Overall... It's at California, not the easiest place to play. I could see either one of these teams winning it. I think California is definitely going to be a top three team in the division standings in the Pac-12 North. I feel like they're going to be in the top half. Uh, you know, they're better than some of the other teams in the Northern Division. Uh, so I think California will be a competitor. I would favor Washington, especially talent-wise, but I could see Ca California winning this one. Stanford. Uh, you know, I don't think Stanford's going to be great next season. I will say, Stanford had a really tough schedule last year, to be fair. They had a really, really tough schedule, so they might have been a little bit better than people actually thought they were. Uh, I know they're getting Emmett Smith's son, I believe. Um, he's coming to Stanford, so that's good. Uh, but besides from that, I don't see anything that will, that makes this game stand out as a really tough game for the Huskies. I'll take the Huskies. 11 at USC. Big, big game here. USC is pretty talented. They've got a lot of experienced talent. Terrible recruiting class, but again, tons of experienced talent. And it's at the Coliseum late in the season. Won't be an easy game by no measure. Uh, for Washington, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a good one. I could really see either team winning it. Coaching-wise, to be honest, Jimmy Lake's a new head coach, but he's probably a lot better than Clay Helton. He's probably a lot better than Clay Helton is. So, I mean, I think Washington probably has the advantage coaching-wise. Talent-wise, though, I would definitely favor USC. They've got Kenan Slovis, who is pretty good. Uh, so, I could see either team winning this. But USC being at home definitely helps a lot. 12, Colorado. Should not be a tough game. This one should be easy. And 13 at Washington State. So for most Pac-12 teams, I would say, oh, this is a pretty tough game. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a pretty tough game. For those of you who don't know, though, Washington versus Washington State, that rivalry is basically like the Pac-12's version of the game. It's like Michigan versus Ohio State. That's exactly what it is in the sense that Washington has a big streak going against Washington State. So playing at Pullman is in no means easy for anybody. But I think, but just it's Washington. It's Washington, and Washington just seems to always beat Washington State. Plus, Washington State's losing Mike Leach. So, you know, tough place to play, but I'm going to go Washington here. They're the Huskies, and it's the Apple Cup. Uh, Washington always wins. So I'll take Washington. So overall, I have the Huskies going either 8-4 and or 9-3. and three. I lean more towards 8-4 and four because it is a transition year, but I could see 9-3 and three as well. It's an improvement from last season overall, record-wise at least. It's an improvement from last season. And when you lose your star quarterback in Jacob Eason and you lose a Hall of Fame head coach in, uh, you know, Chris Peterson, you would expect them to do, to do worse, but I think Washington will actually be a pretty good football team next year. So I have them at 8-4. and four. I think this is something Washington fans should take as a good sign overall. It's Jimmy Lake's first year. It's going to be a transition year, but overall, they're still good record-wise. I think the losses are Oregon. Good chance it's Michigan, although I wouldn't be shocked if Washington won that one, but I would say Michigan's probably a loss. I think maybe they split the Utah and USC games, and they lose one more fluke loss overall. So that's how I get to 8-4. and four. Uh, But overall, in my opinion, it's still a pretty good season for Washington. They're just going to need time to transition. 
Uh, but anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thank you for joining in. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Check out all my other videos. Recommend this content to other people. And yeah, guys, that's it for now. Thank you for joining in.